Uh, welcome back, everyone. Kevin the Archer here. Time for some more Subnautica. So we're going to do a couple things before we go there. We're going to scan all this stuff and read the entries for it. But first things first, I need, I'm going to grind some more of this thing. Since it respawns, it's silly not to. I assume it's like three each time would be my guess, but I guess we'll find out. Yep. Here's be three each time. Yep, then it starts spinning up to get ready to reload it. That's neat. Oh, it's real fast too, actually. Way faster than that. Oh, maybe not as fast as I thought. Whatever. Let's do some scanning. Ancient blade. Ancient Earth Blade. An ancient Earth Blade dating back to the 13th century. Blood and samples on the blade match DNA of seven separate heads of state from the period. This evidence supports the theory that the aliens are an ancient spaceborne civilization engaged in surreptitious study of less developed species. Rudimentary tablet. This device shares many similarities with the tablets used in the alien. A to access alien facilities, although its structure is, is rather less complex. May have served a similar purpose, granting security access and storing relevant data, and thus kept here as a form of legacy support. Circular object. Holographic projector. The device contains a network apparatus and a holographic projector unit was likely used as a communications relay, capturing and projecting the image of the user to a remote location, but not appear to be any other objects in range. This artifact is unpowered, suggesting it served as a ceremonial rather than practical purpose. The pyramid resembles vines spiraling upward towards the warm blue stone mounted above it. Above it. it may represent a plant found on the alien's home world, a building of religious import, or even the gravitational pull of their home solar system. Last but not least, a strange carving. This carving is hundreds of thousands of years old and made of an unrecognizable natural fiber grown on an unknown planet, for a striking resemblance to the old Earth yin yang symbol. Two competing theories may explain the similarity. Aliens visited Earth prior to the 4th century BC and influenced the development of ancient Chinese philosophy. The concept of yin-yang is universal, since yin and yang describe the fundamental interdependence of seemingly opposite forces. It may be, necessary, may be a necessary existential understanding in some form in all sufficiently developed civilizations. The tapering of two circles, union, in opposed infinitesimally small points, the finite, is one logical way to represent this understanding. It may have been developed independently by species other than humans. Cool. Got all those things scanned. Looks like that thing is done getting rebuilt. Let's go see what kind of what kind of tablet do you require? Don't say blue. Apparently it's blue. <laughs> don't be blue, don't be blue, don't be blue. Damn it, it's blue. Have we been down there already? Oh, we came in that way. Duh. No, no, it's fine. Welcome aboard, Captain. I'm do one more grinding here. Alright, I guess we're heading back to go build a new blue tablet. Which requires kyanite, which we don't have. Alright, this will be fun. Alright, so let's turn on another gateway. This one. Right, whatever. There you go. Drink some water too. Is this the one I turned it on already? I want to go out a different way than we came in. Nope, I haven't done this one yet. Do I have another one of these on me? Yes.
Oh man, I do not want to go back out there to get more kyanite, but we're gonna have to. But one thing at a time. First thing I want to do is hello. Oops, I actually didn't really want to shoot him all over the wall, but that's okay. Um, is I want to establish where we are. So that's going to require leaving the prawn here and taking my uh, sea glide back to the base and building a beacon and coming back that way. It's going to be a bit of a thing. Hopefully we're not too far. Where is it? 1,500 meters. We're pretty far. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. I'm just gonna leave this here, that way I know where it is. Oh, hello. Yeah. Hey. You need to go. Hello, base. Did you miss me? Welcome aboard, Captain. I think that means she missed me. Let's dump this salt here. <clears throat> Alright, we gotta make another blue tablet. Blue tablets require... Kyanite, right? Oh, wrong one. Yep, which we do not have. I'm going to double check all of my things here to make sure that, I, that that is a true statement, but I'm pretty sure we don't have it. It's my own cubes. We have one kyanite in there, which I'm going to guess is all the kyanite we have. Yep, officially all the kyanite we have. Alright, so what do I need to make... Whoops. What do I need to make the fancier batteries? Ion battery. Ion cube, gold and silver. Alright, let's do that first. One, two, three, four. We'll make four of them. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. One iron battery. I'm gonna turn at least a couple of these into power cells too. And I guess we'll just be turning it into one power cell because I don't really feel like making a lot of more extra of these, but I need, uh... Oh, nope, that was right. One power cell. I'm gonna take some silicone and rubber with me in case I, for some reason, decide I want to, uh... I want to make more of those. But I'm going to put that, I think, in this guy. Probably the best bet. Also, this thing runs out of batteries pretty fast. Put one in there. Alright, so we're just gonna have to go... Oh, we need to make a beacon. I almost completely forgot I had to make a beacon. That would have been really annoying. Beacon, 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 where are you? I wonder if I should make the stasis rifle. That would probably be a good idea, to have a stasis rifle on us. I wonder if it's strong enough to actually uh, freeze the big guy if we need to. I think I'm gonna do that, but where's the beacon? Copper and titanium. All right, let's make a couple. Let's make a handful of beacons. All right, we're gonna make ourselves a stasis rifle as well. I don't know how big of a creature this thing can freeze, but I'm excited to find out. That is not the white thing I wanted to put there. There it is. Alright, so we got this guy, we got this guy. Motivational note. Craig McGill, 
crash landed in the acid swamps at Boreal 9, fought off arachnid kidney poachers, and hijacked a tame star wall. If he can do all that, you can survive one more day. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take this stuff. I suppose we need to get some food and water and things. Um, we're gonna take this stuff back to the other side, and we're gonna have to get. Our goal is gonna have to be getting um, more kyanite. Damn it, the stupid tree! I should probably grab another nutrient block to take with us just so we don't have to worry about food for a while. Alright, so we're gonna take all this, we're gonna go and try and make another tablet. We'll probably have to come back here again, unfortunately. Because of the fact that we're gonna we don't have a place to build things down there. Alright, so we've made it back. I want to do this just to just to see how it works. Where's one of these guys? There. Oh, neat. So that's how that works. All right. Um, let me let drop a beacon here. Whoops. I was worried about this guy getting all up in my face. Edit name. Uh, exit one. Nope, not that. Welcome aboard, Captain. Alright, so we'll head back. My main goal, I think, first of all, is going to be to um, tag all the exits. And we'll see where all the various places we can leave are. Because one of them is probably closer to the... At least the, the archer. Than the others, but we'll see. Leave that behind, because I just need to... Just need to go to the end of the tunnel and drop the uh, beacon off so that we can... Know where we are. So where are we here? That's still a thousand meters away. So we're a long way. This actually looks like the deep river kind of area. Six hundred. I think this might actually be. This might actually exit into the deep river, which would not be a terrible exit. Did I find this already? I feel like maybe I found this already. Yep, this definitely exits into the deep river. No, I didn't find this one. This deep river exit. Hmm. Cool. Just none of these. None of these are close to where I want them to be. Do I have a thing in my... No, I don't have a thing in my inventory. I saw a thing that there was a speedrunner who who made who finished this game. I think the uh, it was like 53 minutes or maybe 30. It was either 30 or 30 minutes or 53. 33 minutes or 53 minutes. I can't remember now what it is, but I kind of want to watch the video. I haven't I haven't want to finish the game first, but I'm curious. I'm not usually one much for speedruns, but this game is an unusual kind of game, and so I'm kind of curious as to how the 
It's not a, not a common game for speed running, I guess, is what I'm saying. I'm curious to see how it turns out. Should probably drink some water. Water's getting a little low. No oh, man. Oh, I need. No, I have my beacon already. Oh, this one's got a nice cloak set to it, too. That's nice. Thanks for that. Exit 3. So, where is this in relation to everybody? 90, 1000. So, we basically built our base in like the worst possible place. It's like at least a thousand meters, also known as a kilometer. It's at least a kilometer from everywhere we want to be. Alright. Now for the hard part. Gotta go get some kyanite. suppose we're lucky and there's like, there's kind of right there. What that's going to require, I think, standing in lava to get? suppose we can try it and see. Okay, we're good. Wish I could look around while I'm doing this. just need one. I mean, I'm gonna drill the whole thing, but I only really need one. I didn't like that sound. a little bit. Alright, well that was not as scary as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> now we got to take it back to somewhere where there's actually a recharge station. And by recharge station I mean a thing where we can craft stuff. So, without the things on the inside, this makes it a little bit harder. I think this was the deep... River one? No, the deep river one was over here, I think. Well, whatever. We'll just go through one, and if it's not the one I want. I am thinking, was thinking the deep river one would be good because it's we're relatively close to the refueling station, which would be uh, probably our most easily accessible. Um, crafting station, but wherever this goes, it's fine. Returned home to our pod for the first time in a very long time. It was the closest place I could craft, so. No radio. Anything in here? Did I leave anything in here? Some flares. Fins. Nothing important. Alright. Let's get a blue tablet. Nice. Uh, I'm gonna leave some of this kyanite behind in case I die. One of each, in case in case we need it for some reason. All right, I'm going to head back. All right, we're now back here, and I am ready to do this. Forward into the breach. have some ion cubes on me, right? Yes. I feel like the ion cube is likely to be useful at some point. Pool of water. I 
getting stuck on. Why is this not working? Is the grappler's not strong enough outside the water to pull you up? I guess. Alright, I guess we'll go down here. Hello. Hi, Mama. Are you here to play? Others came here once. They built these walls. They played alone. They bored me. Now they're gone. And instead, we have you. We are curious whether you swim with the current or fight against it as they did. How's it going, lady? I don't know if I can scan you or not. I suppose I should put the scanner on my bar. Detecting unusually passive behavioral patterns in nearby predators. Reason unknown. Unlike other alien facilities, scans indicate this location supports a diverse and healthy ecosystem. Explanation unclear at this time. Nope, can't scan her. Okay. Alright, so let's uh, cruise around, I guess, and check, check out what's going on. What is this over here? Anything? Kind of achievement 14,000 leagues under the sea. This is the thing, it just seems to be a light. Environment scans indicate the water here is rich with a rare plankton like life form which depends on the organic detritus produced by the ecosystem around it. Let's go get some air, and then we'll look at the other stuff. So there's a platform down here. Some eggs. Incubator. Hatching enzymes. The emperor's specimens' eggs are attached to some form of incubator. In the normal flight cycle, it seems likely that the sea emperors would have buried the eggs in shallower waters, or different organic materials in the soil would have triggered the hatching response. Incubators suggest the aliens have resorted to developing artificial hatching enzymes that would simulate the egg's natural hatching environment, but were unable to discover the formula. The extensive information of the sea emperors themselves, it may be possible to fabricate artificial hatching enzymes using indigenous agreements. However, only surviving source of information may be the sea emperor itself. Sea emperor eggs. Shell. Uncommonly strong. Organic growth exterior suggests it may be hundreds or thousands of years old. Alien tubes. Alien device penetrate the outer shell, likely designed to supp supply them with nutrients and to isolate them in the surrounding environment. Amniotic sac, like many eggs, they do not contain a nutrient supply which is slowly exhausted by the embryo. Instead, they exist in a form of natural stasis awaiting appropriate hatching conditions. Fetal organism, there is a high genetic match between these organisms and the Leviathan in the vicinity. They appear to be stable and healthy. It is likely that the hatching conditions eggs vary and consider the ideal conditions for the planet. What's up, lady? You gonna say something? My young need to hatch, to play outside this place. We have been here so long. 
The others built a passage to reach the world outside. I asked them for this freedom, but they could not hear me. If you help us, I will give you freely what the others tried in vain to take. Sure, lady. You got it. Alright, I gotta get air again. I don't want to bring the prawn suit down here because I feel like it's going to be really hard to get it out. In case you're wondering why I left it up here. Welcome aboard, Captain. Water. Alright, so let's look at this, uh... Thing here. Oh, you know what we should probably grab? Should probably grab another ion cube because I don't think I have any more main inventory. <clears throat> and we may need it to power up the gate that's down here. Insert hatching enzymes. How do I know what the hatching enzymes are? Yeah, so this is the gate that I was hoping to, to do. Yeah. She tells us, right? She tells us somehow? Could have sworn this lady tells us what we need for the hatching enzymes. You know, here we go. Thanks for the assist. Could not force from me. To you, I give the secret willingly. Hatching enzymes. There we go. All right. So I guess I will get the prawn suit. <laughs> so I'm take it out that way. It's the emperor's life cycle. That's a big one. Come back to that in a second. I'm worried about our air. Alright. Available biological data has been used to synthesize the effects of the alien bacteria on the sea, na sea Emperor's natural life cycle. This creature likely lived and moved in small herds around the planet's ocean trenches, coming to the surface to feed off the huge volumes of microorganisms in the shallower waters. Family size would be strictly limited by the available food supply. Offspring would likely split off at a young age and form their own herds elsewhere. Given their sparse population, mating and egg laying was likely infrequent, perhaps only once in a lifetime event. Species likely had a preferred environment for egg laying. In fact, successful hatchling may depend on such conditions. Given the rarity of the event, it is impossible to calculate those conditions precisely. There's no evidence to support the assumption that all of the members of the species were immune to the f f immune from the alien bacterium. Even if it is so, there is evidence that the introduction of bacteria may have decimated the life on the planet and would have had catastrophic effect on the emperor's food supply and survival rate. Symbiotic relationships between this specimen and other life forms likely developed as a direct result of the bacterium infection. Infection was life forms which learned to keep the emperor alive, survived for its help, and may explain the vast tracts of lifeless ocean in the rough perimeter around the emperor's location. I don't remember which side this thing was on. I think it was on the other side. 
It was. In we go. I don't remember where this one comes out. Thousand meters from the base, because they're all a thousand meters from the base. Alright, I don't know where we are. But I'm going to stop here for today, um, and we'll pick it up next time. Thanks so much.